It's hot hatch time. Three and a horsepower with the all-new Cooper Leon. The Leon available as Seat and Cupra. This one here, the performance version with the Cupra logo, tribal alike, copper accentuations. Headlamps come LED as standard, matrix LED not available yet, and a very strong lower spoilers. And Desire Red is the striking color for today. And also coming up, Insta360 ONE R, a camera test of these action cams in our driving path. This will be very interesting. The length here, 4 meters 40 or 173 inches, typical hot hatch styling here with a very strong C pillar. The platform is being shared by the VW Golf and the Škoda Octavia. However, here the long wheelbase version together with the Octavia, you only have the long wheelbase with the Golf if you go there with the variant with the Estate. The normal Golf hatch and the Audi A3 have the short wheelbase. That's very interesting and will have an effect here on the rear seating. The Cupra, again, with the bigger wheels, soon take a deeper look at that. And then the contrasting side mirrors right there. And this color once again works very well with the dramatic design lines. And the Cupra Leon comes standard with 19-inch wheels. Look at that, really striking styling. Different styles are available. This one here, again, with copper accentuations and some kind of aerodynamic form. And in the background here today, the beautiful River Rhine in Germany. And it's nice scenery here. And well, we had sunshine, really hot temperatures and also rain. That's nature. And here, the striking light strip that goes from left to right. This is a very beautiful signature right there. And the exhaust here in the Cooper Leon, is that for real? Uh, it looks really cool. <whistles> but a lot for the Audi Gefühl, fake exhaust police. Because when you look on the inside, there are real ones and actually four. Mm, but this is kind of enhanced by the, yeah. The air goes through, but I think still a case for the fake exhaust police, isn't it? And the two liter TSI here makes 300 horsepower, this four cylinder engine in 5.7 seconds is the excavation figure. Front wheel drive, an all wheel drive version is also available with the ST only, with the Estate, then 310 horsepower and the all wheel drive. Door closing sound, very solid. At the inside of the doors here, soft touch and also even softer right here in leather red. And then the Cupra steering wheel with the Cupra button to access the Racia mode. And on the right side, you start and stop the engine. And yes, no capacitive BS. Here, still real buttons to control the cruise control and so on. Copper accentuations at the air vents and also here at the floor mats. The sports bucket seats right here come with fabric on the inside and leatherette on the outside, so animal free indeed. If you search the Alcantara, that has gone into the Seat branding now. So a Seat Leon offers Alcantara, whereas the Cooper Leon goes with the fabric. The Alcantara looks a little bit fancier, but the fabric is also quite good because it's quite breathable. Still an Alcantara option also for the Cooper Leon would still be nice. Digital instruments, let's light them up. Yeah, there we go. Woo, brum, brum. There you can see the RPMs on the left side, right side with the speed. And you can also change the view. For example, have assistance systems view or then here the map all over the place. So a Seat Leon would start with the 8-inch screen. The Cupra here gets the 10-inch screen as standard. This is like the base main menu. So you can, for example, click here to get to the GPS. And here we go. And you can see it depends on the online connection sometimes also. It could be a little bit more responsive. Since the most recent software upgrade, this system has become better. The very first Leons were not that good actually, but now meanwhile it's better. Um, here you can check out, you know, air conditioning as well directly in this menu, for example. Um, still, you know, here that you control the temperature right there, and it's also not illuminated and here the volume, don't think that's good. Volume you can still do at the steering wheel, that's better, but for the Climate control, I'm really not happy with that. Would have wished for a better solution. This is another main menu that's, that's available. Then you can go for the air conditioning menu right here and have the vent strength, for example. Yeah, but still, this is not my favorite solution. Is it yours? So let's try to connect the Apple CarPlay wirelessly right here. So without a cable, you can put in the cable. That is possible, but you can also do it wirelessly like this. Here we go. And the Beats sound system is actually quite decent in here, so why not? And on the left side you still see the AC information, 
but here the integration is actually quite good. In the lower area with two USB-C chargers, inductive charging mat for your phone, then shift by wire DSG shifting lever, that saves a lot of space, so there's no mechanical link. The space is fitting for your key. Oh yeah, easy off button. Gonna use that, right? <laughs> Sometimes. Then the cup holders, non-adaptive though, but two different sizes. Different sizes. So, and then here we have some more space with a 12 volt power supply. And seating position, sporty indeed, and with one with a 6 and 6 with 1, still enough headroom left. And usually I put the seat a little bit higher to have a better angle. And the steering wheel control, manual, but very solid how everything feels and so on. So it's indeed a good build quality. But is it better build quality than the previous generation? I would not say so. And in the rear you have enough legroom, that's step forward if you compare to the previous generation. So really very spacious here in the rear with this longer wheelbase now. And you can also have a look through the panoramic roof. And headroom in the rear, even very good. So for four tall adults, it's really a nice vehicle to use. Two USB-C chargers in the rear and the floor mats also in the rear have this carbon fiber fabric stylus. Of course, not really carbon fiber, but it has this this is carbon fiber styling, actually. And then we have a trunk view for you. You can see, you can very well use it with the backpack and the cabin trolley. And the length here is about 80 centimeters or a little bit more than 30 inches. And with the seats down, we come over 60 inches or more than 150 centimeters. Holy moly, I really... It felt like a swirl of heat coming from that launch crawl when AJ launched it, whoa! Welcome to our driving part, Thomas and AJ joining you here and we can change the driving modes. This is a normal driving mode, sport mode, we already hear it and Cooper mode, this is the sportiest one and yeah, I guess the best one also here for the motorway. The road is a little bit wet so we see this is front-wheel drive only model how this one performs then here. Yeah, that's just Hammond, I would say. In this car pass and then let's go. Oh, wheel spin. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. Woo! <laughs> that's but nice. Yeah, it really, really picked it up. And the sound is actually quite nice. I mean, they use this sound actuator here on the exactly. inside. But I mean, why not? You know, we also heard from the, it's not too bad from the outside either. So, um, I'm all for sound actuators because, let's be honest, it's for guys like you and me and, and, yeah. and our viewers, the car nerds out there who want to hear the sound. And people outside you, for them it's probably a nuisance. So yeah. pump the sound inside, you know? Don't, don't pump it out. Don't yeah, and we also it. appreciate the noise insulation, you know? But recently actually felt that the new Peugeot 308 has a better noise insulation than the Leon. Um, that was quite astonishing. The Leon is not good, not not um, not bad from noise insulation, you know. But exactly. um, here now on the motorway, it could be a little bit more silent actually. Definitely, with the yeah. rain and on the, the pattering of the raindrops, yeah. it is quite loud. I have to yeah, raise yeah. my voice just to talk to you. So exactly, sound insulation, yeah. not the best. Yeah. So now let's do uh, 100 to 130. Let's see. And <laughs> that was. Yeah. And that's already uh, wow. That, I mean, that was really a nice kick when we were already at speed and there was still some power reserves left. So this Cooper mode tunes this two liter four cylinder really to, well, to higher stakes. So that's really nice. I also like the ambient lighting there, right? right? Look at that. I do, I it's do. Like, it's, I mean, I, when, whenever I drive a Cooper, like the four mentor, I also felt like I was in some kind of an alien spaceship, you know? Yeah. You have that tribal art logo, that copper accents, and with this kind of canyon on the top, it feels like I'm driving some kind of, you know, from some yeah. Marvel characters, evil spaceship or something. Yeah, it, it really works, like, to make this car more emotional, so I think that that's, that's really cool, and I mean, I love to have still the manual buttons here for the cruise control at the steering wheel, mm -hmm. that's really important. But then I talked about, you know, in the interior, interior part, and I think we, we kind of agree that like here with the temperature dials and so on, and oh, yeah. phew, it's why? It's backlit, the icons are way too small, the, the seat heating, you know, button is all the way over there. I can't call it a button, yeah. it's touch place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> touch, touch place, place yeah. Is, is so far away. If you know what the real, real term for that is, I'm sure there's an actual term, but I really don't think this is a safe 
kind of uh, method. I get it, it, it's cost saving, it's easy to scale. But uh, yeah. That took a while, the downshift, right? Yeah, that took a while. Like this. Idea. Yeah. But I mean, of course, I don't put uh, the EC Sport now when it's wet and so on, but still the car is hooking up quite well, although it's front wheel drive only. So um, the electronic stability control and the traction control there in, in the front. They're working very well, so you can also have a good acceleration even when the road is wet. There is this all-wheel drive version with the Estate, has a little bit more power, and of course, due to more traction, it's also fast in acceleration, less than five seconds. Whereas we're about 5.7 here with this one. Yeah. Would you go for the all-wheel drive version, or would you go for this one here? I would go for the all-wheel drive version, and this is the same that we saw in the previous gen, where uh, Seat offers the Cupra with the Estate only as all-wheel drive. Yeah. I think 300 horsepower is a really healthy amount. I mean, yeah. the GTI generally you get 245. So I think you want to have that all-wheel drive capability. And um, I think there's a little bit better balance there. And you can put that power to the ground better. But just coming back to that interior design like we were talking about, one other thing that I really like about this ambient lighting is it also mimics the blind spot monitoring. Yes, so that's really cool. Imagine. That's really cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So What I don't um, like is that the seat belt doesn't uh, adjust for height. It, 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 yeah, that's, was it in a generation before? Maybe some of our viewers know that from, from his or her Leon. But indeed, that could be something again with a uh, you know with a space saving uh, cost, cost saving. saving sorry yeah, yeah space saving it's, it's the opposite we have more space now in this generation let me now there's a car coming there it is there yeah. it is that's really nice so great integration of this blind spot monitor <laughs> I was waiting to keep it car on lane here mm -hmm. because the other one was coming the now we're getting off on the mirror is actually just I saw right now it's just the indicator so the yeah. turn signal which blinks but yeah it's pretty cool. I mean, chassis-wise, really great again. L really stiff in this, you know, MQB generation. So everything that is presented to us hardware-wise, that driving agility is really superb. Also the steering feel, really finely tuned. You have, you know, control over the car in any situation, even when it's a little bit wet here now. I'm feeling super controlled, super safe. And this is really just a joy, I mean, oh, you see the, the exhaust, yeah, yeah, exhaust crackles and pops. That's really nice. And I think the steering feel is the favorite thing here for me in the vehicle. So, you know, there's no dead zone area at all and lane change here at higher speeds. This feels super natural and really a lot of fun. Definitely really cool. I think also this is the longer wheelbase, right? So it's yes, a bit longer indeed, than the Golf GTI. Indeed. Yeah, gonna, yeah. There's a Golf and the A3 have the shorter wheelbase and the Leon and the Octave, the longer one. Right. The Golf only when you go for the variant for the estate, then it does have the, the longer wheelbase actually. But I mean to the previous generation it still feels super sporty in the hot hatch version. So it's not that oh it has lost a lot due to the longer wheelbase or something. Mm -hmm. It's also good with the DCC here, the adaptive suspension, and that gives us, of course, a little bit more flexibility. You know, we're stiffer here now in the sports mode and the Cupra mode, but still, it's really comfortable from suspension, mm -hmm. so that's no issue at all. Oh, 82, 100, 120, up the hill, woo! <laughs> you can well, definitely hear a lot more of yeah. the turbo, but that sound actuator, that resonator, yeah, yeah. brings that induction, yeah. that firing sound back into the cabin, which is nice. Uh, did, did you see that, guys? Uh, maybe from, from the camera up there. So there was actually this, uh, I wanted to show you the acceleration. I want everyone to see like how fast it's going. Then there was like eco tip, uh, leave the lever in D for better fuel economy. Like <laughs> why in I this situation, it's like in, in the Cooper mode, why? You know, eco tip, okay, but not in Cooper mode, shouldn't appear there, right? Yeah, I don't know. But how you guys like the cameras, by the way, the uh, Insta360 ONE R, got two of them, so we got all over the cameras here today. I hope you'll enjoy also the perspectives and check out the video description if you want to see more of these cameras. And now I want to see AJ driving. We still have a nice part coming up where it's a little bit more in the winding countryside road. <laughs> yeah, AJ on the move. Did I mention I'm a bad co-driver? <laughs> but AJ got everything under control, man. This does feel very tight, like you were saying. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think about steering? 
That's a good question. So, I mean, we know this platform really well. We know what kind of systems they put. We know that progressive rack. We're very familiar with it. So, it's a very familiar feeling, but I think I would have liked a little bit more feedback. I would have loved to feel it dance around a little bit more. I would have loved to feel, you know, all these little undulations, any groove or trough in the road that the wheels start following. I have a feeling because they've put this really heavy duty uh, axle in terms of that electronic differential to tame that 300 horsepower, maybe some of that feedback is lost in that? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, Could the it be possible? differential, it's the XDS, which is standard and also here for the vehicle. The DCC, the electric suspension, is also standard for the Cooper, by the way, so you actually get a fair, decent, decent package, actually. So, um, I mean, we could still, you know, go to ESC sport mode or completely deactivate ESC, but we'd rather do it when it's dry road. Yeah. So maybe then you get a little bit more, you know, playing around feeling, uh, kind of like yeah. that. But I agree, my 300 horsepower, just in the front axle, can always be some kind of a problem but when you have all the electronic in place you know mm -hmm. I think they manage it as good as possible let's take it that yeah. way you know. I also like the shape of these paddle shifters they're a little bit taller they have that same kind of gun metal gray finish as the steering wheels yeah. so it feels a little bit more special it gives you a sense of occasion I think it's really important for cars like this to make you feel like that so anytime you're driving to work or just you know on a on an evening or a Sunday it should bring about that sense of occasion that makes you want to get out and drive it I love motorcycles and I think every motorcycle okay not commuter motorcycles but every motorcycle is it's all about the sense of occasion and honestly because we use cars for much more mundane activities you know getting groceries driving to school so on and so forth it's easy to lose that sense of occasion and that's why i think cars like this are important in today's world yeah every roundabout you have it's really a lot of fun you feel that really stiff chassis that yeah, yeah. That's really cool. and the seats are really holding me tight you know also as co-driver that's important i mean we all know it, um, especially now where, you know, when we have our girls and on the call, they say something like, what are you doing, AJ? What are you doing, Thomas? <laughs> and, exactly. And it's really good to have you know, a seat that really hold you tight. The fabric surface together with the strong bolt string here at the side mm -hmm. really feels very well, really secure as well. Yeah, I also like the seating position. It's, uh, of course, I like to have my seat all the way down. Um, the central transmission tunnel or this console is a bit a bit pretty tall and hard as well, right? yeah, it's pretty yeah. hard as well and yeah. then because you put your knee against it after a while yeah. it can tend to get a little bit uncomfortable visibility is also pretty good I would say you know especially going around these little village streets to make sure you're not hitting any of the curbs it's easy to place the front of the car we're not uh, moving away from the Cooper mode, by the way. It's just so much fun <laughs> driving in the Cooper mode, right? Yeah, <laughs> and you're right. Even on these bumpy streets, it, the chassis is stiffer, but the dynamic chassis control doesn't just yeah. change the rate of compression and rebound. It's continuously varying that, yeah. but in different programs. Yeah, it's just... Ooh, wheel spin! Yeah, stem, <laughs> Did you feel that? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it yeah. spun, and then it gripped, and then you could feel that. Oh, torque yeah, steer, no. too. Plenty of torque steer. But um, the chassis is really good. Yeah. That engine is very lively. Even for a turbocharged engine, there's a lot of power on the top end. Yeah, I mean, I would say really like excellent everyday racer, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you can, by the way, also compare to the Golf R with all-wheel drive, now also torques in the rear. Mm -hmm. The Leon does not offer that, but the Cooper Formant Tour does offer that torque mm. steer, um, you know, torque split. Be, like, torque split. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and of course, we already have a video of the Cupra Leon ST as the hybrid because when you say, like, I don't need a typical hot hatch version, rather go like for this, you know, subsidized budget thing. Because in Germany, it's way cheaper now going for plug in hybrids because of taxation and so on. So, this could also be something you should go for. But mm -hmm. I mean, this one here, although the orbit drive version is quicker, this one here kind of is like the purest racer approach, you know, the typical mm -hmm. hot hatch, three and horsepower version, that might still something. Mm, 
I will contest you on that because I think a purist hot hatch should be a little bit less powerful because then okay. you're really able to <laughs> you're really able to put down all that power without the need for this brake based torque vectoring electronic differential or any kind of this mambo jumbo and in this kind of a power output with this kind of a drivetrain, sorry, the powertrain, you need a drivetrain which is able to put it down and make the most of it. And that's why I still stand with my initial comment that I would take the all-wheel drive version. I think this chassis and this engine really yeah. needs it. Or there's also this Cupra GTI version now available with 245 horsepower, now also available for the Cupra Leon. Maybe this could be something. Yeah, or then again, Golf R going all the way with the all-wheel drive or then maybe the hybrid if you don't need like the most power but rather want this you know compromise or something but yeah sound wise here <laughs> still a lot of fun it's very bassy yeah, you know yeah. for a two liter yeah, 